Okay, so let's talk about encryption. Um, there's a little cool package that I like to use every now and again called Advanced Encryption Package. Um, you have a trial version, but you can also get the actual uh, full or paid version of it. But I like it just because it, it gives you the basic overview of encryption, gives you a variety of algorithms to choose from, which are down here in the... Uh, in the algorithm list and things like that. So what we're going to do is basically I, I've created a directory and and a file called encryptme.txt uh, that's sitting on my hard drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a password. I'm just going to call it password. It'll rate the uh, the strength of it. Uh, so I can do this symmetrically, uh, or you can see there's a public key component here, which is an asymmetric component. I can choose the algorithm. Now this is nice because you can actually see a variety of the symmetric algorithms. So if we just back up and look at principles for a second, remember in the integrity world, we want to detect to see if something has been changed, modified, or altered. But in the confidentiality world, we purposely do want to change things. In fact, we want to change things from plain text, the stuff that we can see, to ciphertext, the stuff that we can see. And so any symmetric algorithm, it basically works like a padlock. You basically put in a password and it changes plain text and the ciphertext, forwards and backwards, and that's it. All keys in the symmetric world are private keys. So there's a little saying that we have in class where we just rattle off all of the symmetric algorithms. So as A, these three guys had an idea to cast out their Ratu fish for blowfish, but instead they received serpents in the rain. So let me go through that a little slower, and then let me show you that basically in a, in a program or a tool like this. So A, A for AES, and you would look on this list for AES. Now, in fact, Rain Dial is based off of AES. So this can work in AES 256 bit mode. D's or DES, three guys for triple DES had an idea, and you can see if idea is in this list, doesn't look like that it is, to cast, um, cast right here, which is a 256 version, version of cast, to cast out their rod two fish. So you can see if two fish is here, and there it is. For blowfish, there's blowfish, um, but instead they received, received is the Rivest cipher, so they have, specifically have Rivest 2, but there's 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Serpents, uh, Serpents is in the list somewhere, here it is at the bottom. Uh, in the rain, which again is uh, rain dollar AES. And there's a few others that I didn't cover. Mars, Skipjack, which is, you know, relatively outdated. Square, Shark, Ghost, Three-Way, Safer, T, Diamond. Um, so there are others if you want to get the idea. Um, one of the most testable things about these algorithms is the bit size. So it is helpful to basically see those here. Uh, for example, Skipjack is 80. I'm looking for unique trends and patterns here. Blowfish is 448. Triple Des is basically 192 or 168, depending on how you want to add it up with or without parity. Um, Des is normally uh, 56. In this case, they're running a 128 bit version of that. Um, uh, AES actually comes in variable sizes too, so it's 128, 192, and 256. So this program implements the 256 version, etc., etc., etc. So you realistically can pick any algorithm you want. All of these are effectively going to work exactly the same. So in this case, we'll use Blowfish just because uh, it's not exactly popular on Windows, uh, but it is in the open source world and things like that. Um, and then basically encrypt the file. All right. Uh, and then encrypt now. Error. The second password does not match the first. Oops. Go ahead and put in your password. I just put in the word password. And then go ahead and encrypt the file. And now you can see encryptme.titx.aep. And that's the one. So now if I want to decrypt that file. Uh, and actually, before we do that, let's go actually see the actual uh, file on the hard drive. So I have that in a folder called Leo. And if I try to open this or manipulate manipulate this, it actually comes up right with the um, password right here. So to decrypt the file, we basically uh, just put in our password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, select um, decrypt, and it says, uh, hey, it already exists. Do you want to override it? And we can select yes here just to prove that it is 
you know, in fact, going to decrypt it. And you can see the encrypted content. So I just made something simple here. I just put hi, mom. Um, but it really doesn't matter the size because I just basically proved that it, that it works. So there's a couple different reasons for using a tool like this. One, it actually gets you a little bit fl more fluent with the algorithms, okay? Please note, you don't see any MD5, you don't see any SHA, Tiger, Whirlpool, uh, Cyclic Redundancy, Checks, Have Out, no integrity algorithms are in here. You also do not see any asymmetric algorithms in the symmetric list. So it gets you pretty familiar with basically how symmetric algorithms work. Um, now, if you wanted to do uh, public key algorithms, um, you can basically uh, import the public key. And now the cool part about this is, is you don't need the private key. Only the decryptor or the receiver needs the private key. So you just got to import somebody else's public key, and then you can go ahead and, and uh, encrypt it and send the file to somebody else. Um, and it does have like a, a PKI key manager, basically a, the equivalent of a digital key ring here to basically keep keep a whole variety of um, you know the public keys that you've imported okay so that's basically how you can use it into encrypt and decrypt files you can then zip it up email delete the files etc 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 you can do directories um, you can apply filters if you want to find things um, the only thing I don't like about this tool is that in the trial version you have this little pop-up here and you only get 30 days to evaluate it <laughs>